So I am Denise Petri and I work at the University of Sao Paulo. University of Sao Paulo has um, almost 100,000 students and it's located in the south of Brazil. Um, and I would like to show you some results about adsorbents that we have been developed and all these adsorbents are made of cellulose or cellulose derivatives and renewable materials because they are very nice protagonists that can help in the remediation of contaminated water or in the pre-concentration of pollutants as quality control. It's also important because in this way, we can contribute to the goal number six of United Nations, which is clean water and sanitation for our planet. The adsorbents should meet some requirements and uh, the most important are high porosity or high surface area, chemical dimension and mechanical stability in this aqueous medium that will be treated affinity, specificity, or and reactivity with, towards the uh, pollutants. Um, and one way, one simple way to produce porous materials to work as absorbents um, is to make cryogel. So we start from a concentrated solution of polysaccharides then they are frozen and ice crystals are removed by freeze drying so that we get here uh, a very porous materials. And we can add some chemicals, for instance, uh, citric acid, which is a non-toxic uh, polyvalent acid with three uh, carboxyl groups that can Steri uh, undergo esterification with the uh, hydroxyl groups of cellulose and cellulose derivatives. It's a very simple process and very efficient because it uh, just requires the heating at 165 degrees for seven minutes. We have a lot of uh, papers that show that it's very efficient and very simple. Here we have a, a, quick, mo a quick movie about uh, the resilience of these absorbents. So we can crush these um, porous materials. And when we put them in water, they recover the original shape instantaneously. And they are very stable so that we can also make pressure on them and they do not uh, undergo disruption. So uh, in order to get higher efficient, we can modify these materials with functional molecules. Molecules. So one of them is <clears throat> beta cyclodextrin. So beta cyclodextrin are very interesting oligosaccharides. In this case, we have seven uh, glucose uh, units, and uh, they are cycle. And in the cavity, we have here hydrophobic pockets so that we can absorb. Uh, hydrophobic pollutants as bisphenol A, a an emergent pollutant uh, found in many effluents. And we have done it for uh, hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose uh, cryogels when we decorated these uh, sponges, uh, uh, these porous materials with, bet with beta cyclodextrin. Here's an, an example that uh, with uh, 5.6 weight percent of beta cyclodextrin, we could remove 65% of uh, beta uh, of uh, bisphenol A, which is a very nice result. Also, we can modify uh, this kind of membranes because we can shape in different forms. We can also shape as flat surface. So here we have it in the dried state and here's this uh, swollen state so that it's transparent and they are swollen. But the interesting point here is that we can uh, 
modify, we can decorate the surfaces with, uh, for instance, amino acids. In this case, we used the hydrophobic amino acid, tryptophan, and by doing this, we could modulate, we, can, we could tune the amount of bound water. And consequently, we could also drive the amount of uh, adsorbed dye. So the higher the tryptophan content, the higher the bound water and the higher the adsorption capacity. So we can, we can decorate uh, to improve the adsorption capacity. We can also make uh, magnetoresponsive uh, hydrogels. And they are very interesting because you can remove them by approaching uh, a magnet. So after removing the, the pollutants, they can be easily removed by a magnet, but they can also be used for drug delivery and tissue engineering. In this case, we had the sponges um, of HPMC, and you see here that we have a hierarchical poros structure, very small poros, intermediate and large poros, and it was very nice to remove the tenistradiol, which is a pollutant, uh, because it's a hormone used in birth control pills and it's found in many rivers all around the world. And uh, we can also produce them magnetic. So in introducing magnetic particles so that uh, the pores after the, the modification are collapsed part of them so that we lose the uh, about 50% of the removal capacity in comparison to the non-magnetic sponges, but it's easily removed by approaching a magnet. So there are some considerations when we are modifying the adsorbents. We can also make photocatalytic um, adsorbents. In this case, we used uh, nanoparticles of titanium which were incorporated to Santan cryogels to absorb these porous materials. And the result was that by a 10% of titanium, the young models, so the, the elasticity that becomes stiffer uh, than the non-modified, and more important than this, the um, after absorbing methylene blue, which is a, a, a dye, it was very quickly, um, degraded by photobleaching because titania is a photocatalytic uh, particle. So we can uh, add different part particles to achieve different um, properties and effects, but we can also uh, construct interpenetrating polymer networks uh, that works as hydrogels. In this case, it was carboxymethyl cellulose with polyacrylic acid. And it was very nice because in a ratio one-to-one, -one, uh, they achieved very uh, interesting young modules. So they became stiffer and resistant. And also they could remove um, copper ions from uh, uh, effluents and uh, dyes as methylene blue. We can also promote um, interesting materials or form interesting materials using waste. In this case, the waste came from a local market who made, uh, where, where they make um, sugarcane juice. So the sugarcane bag as was transformed in uh, small microparticles that were introduced to carboxymethyl cellulose porous structures. And when we introduce it, the porous change in these shapes, but they became also uh, more stiffer. So we have here almost double the uh, young models of these materials. So we wanted to use these uh, bagasse, sugarcane bagasse particles, SMC uh, absorbents for methylene blue, chromate and bisphenol A. So three different uh, pollutants. And 
what we saw is that for methylene blue, which is a cationic uh, dye, it was perfect because carboxymethyl cellulose has many negatively charged, so the electrostatic attraction uh, was enough to remove almost all dye molecules, but it was not efficient with chromate and not so efficient with uh, BPA. Then we decided to add some um, positively charged uh, surfactants like uh, CTAP. CTAP has a positively charged head and it, it, it's well known to interact with CMC. They build complex so that we got here very nice um, micelles, stables inside of this uh, porous structures. And the removal of methylene blue was perfect and increased a lot of chromate due to the electrostatic attraction of chromate and cationic surface of the micelle. And with BPA, it was great because it was almost 90%. And we understood that the core of the micelle dissolved the BPA. So we made some columns. And here we have the inlet and the outlet. Um, the, uh, column is co uh, connected to a peristaltic pump. And here we have the breakthrough curve that showed that at the beginning, we have here the absorbent. Um, after 10 minutes, in this case, it's chromate. We see that chromate um, accumulates at the surface, at the top of the column. And then with the time, it advances uh, towards the end of the column. At the saturation of the column, where we have here the operating limit of the column, we have almost everything yellow. So it's very nice to, um, to prepare, the, to optimize the operational conditions. For methylene blue, what we had was that we could not um, saturate the column because uh, methylene blue, they have also pi pi stacking. It's a very flat and many uh, aromatic rings so that um, it's almost uh, black here. <laughs> and we didn't get the saturation after three hours. With bisphenol A, we had the saturation after one and a half hour. So we could find a system where we got all of the uh, pollutants absorbed in a very nice way. And that was we tried here. We add the mixture of the pollutants. And why we, we wanted to look at the mixture? Because most of the contaminated effluents, they have a mixture of different contaminants. So charged, uncharged, organics, uh, dyes. And, and that's what we wanted to know, how the absorbents behave when, when we have the soup of pollutants. Né? And, th and this is the result. We could monitor the, the absorption of all of them. So we have here that the first the column was saturated after one hour by chromate ions, chromium-6, yeah? And then after two hours by BPA, bisphenol A, and it was not saturated by uh, methylene blue. So we have here a, a very nice change of colors, now if we compare the beginning and after three hours. We can use models to to get some interesting parameters like the rate constant of mass transfer between the, the, the liquid and the solid phase. And we have also the adsorption capacity. I'd like to, to show it to you just here, the comparison of the adsorption capacity in the mixture of chromate was 10, almost 11 milligram per gram. In comparison to the pure, it was three. So it increased a lot when they are together. And that's because of the presence of methylene blue, because it's like as if we have the co-absorption of um, chromium-6 and methylene blue, and not only on the surface of the micelle. So we have a co-absorption and the interaction 
among the pollutants. And this is, this is the important thing to understand because if you wanted to treat contaminated water, it probably will happen. And, um, and methylene blue adsorption reduced because of the increase of the ionic strength of the medium, which is also an important effect when we have contaminant contaminated effluents. But bisphenol A was the same. So because it's just um, solved in the core of the mice. And we could also regenerate this uh, column after using it. Uh, using nine milliliter of solvents, which is not too much in comparison to the amount of treated contaminated effluent. And it took about 15 minutes. So it's a very nice system. We can also prepare beads of alginate and modify them with polycations and build it and add it to a column. And we can remove the chromium-6, which is carcinogenic, and just rinsing with ascorbic acid, we promote the reduction of chromium-6 to chromium-3 which is uh, very good because chromatry builds a complex with picolinate, which is a dietary supplement. So it's, it's, a nice, it's a nice process. Polydopamine can also be used to coat cellulose, butyrate, acetate butyrate beads for the removal of caffeine. And uh, uh, polydopamine is uh, what we call the uh, muscle inspired uh, coating because the muscles use dopamine to attach to the rocks under underwater in the sea. And uh, we use it to coat the um, beads, cellulose beads. And it's very nice because they are fluorescent and they could remove very nice the caffeine which is also pollutant. And we also did some DFT simulation, theoretical simulation to understand what are the interactions that drive this adsorption, these pi pi interactions and hydrogen bond by this um, basic nitrogen here from caffeine. So the next step is scaling up to large columns and to try to to convert chemical laboratory waste, which we have about 700 liters per year um, from our chemistry classes um, into reuse water. Today they are sent to incineration, but we want to use uh, filters that the the students will prepare based on these uh, renewable materials and the students will treat the laboratory waste and it's, it's our contribution. We understand that it could be a small contribution, but uh, it would be a, a contribution to the goal of six from United Nations uh, Clean Water and Sanitation. I'd like to thank you for your attention. I'd like to thank you for my group and my team here of students and the companies that um, gave us the many samples of polymers, CNPQ and FAPES for financial support and CNPM for some um, equipments that help us to characterize our products. Thank you.